This lesson deals with node voltage analysis in the S domain. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 10, starting on page 22. Consider the following time domain circuit, where I've got a current source in parallel with a resistance, and that's in parallel with a series L and C. Let's formulate the equations in the S domain using our inspection rule for node equations. Now let's include the initial conditions and find the node voltage V sub A of S. Transforming the circuit into the S domain, current source becomes I sub S of S, resistor is a resistor, the inductor has an impedance of SL, an initial condition of I sub L of zero minus divided by S. The capacitor has an impedance of one over SC, and then it's in series with the initial condition divided by S. In other words, both were step functions. Now to do the node equations by inspection algorithm that we did in chapter eight, we need to have all current sources. So let's do a source transformation on this capacitor initial condition voltage. So I have a current source in parallel with the capacitance, same impedance, one over SC, and then we'll take the voltage and then we'll divide it by the capacitance, or really multiply it by the admittance. Here the S is cancel. We just have the initial condition of the capacitor voltage times the capacitance. This was labeled A and B, so let's be node voltage A in the S domain and node voltage B in the S domain. So we'll need a two by two matrix. So we'll start with a blank two by two and begin to fill in the entries. Let's make this a little bit smaller so we can see the matrix formulation and then also the circuit. All right, so here I've got a two by two matrix. What's gonna go in row one, column one, are the things hooked up to our first node V sub A. All right, the conductance would be G and the admittance would be one over SL. What's between nodes A and B? We'd go in row one, column two, and that would be the admittance, one over SL, but then the negative of it. We're gonna sum the admittances and then negate the sum. Now the current sources entering this node are I sub A of S, and then the current in this direction is entering the node. That would be the negative of the initial condition, I sub L of zero minus over S. Go to node B, we'll sum the admittances at this node, and so we're gonna get SC plus one over SL in row two, column two, and what's between nodes B and A, would go in row two, column one, negated. We've got our admittance, one over SL, and then a negative of that. Current sources entering this node are capacitor current, V sub C of zero minus times C, and also plus the initial condition, the inductor, I sub L of zero minus divided by S. Let's go back to full size. Now we can use Kramer's rule to find the node voltage V sub A, and that's associated with column one. So we'll take the left-hand side of the equation, put it into column one, remaining terms here, and then divided by this determinant of our admittance matrix. Notice here the initial conditions only show up in the numerator, not the denominator. So our circuit determinant doesn't depend on our inputs or our initial conditions. Multiply this out then, so I've got this times this, that's this term times this term, minus this, which is minus one over SL, times this, that's this term, and then I've got this term times this term, so here's these two, and then minus this product here, so I've got three minus signs. Let's multiply this out. So I have I sub S times SC, it's this term here. I have I sub S times one over SL, that's this term here. And then I have this term times this, the S is cancel and I just get I sub L of zero minus times C. I also have this times this term, which is gonna be a negative one over S squared L, and then pull out the I sub L of zero minus. Now this term times this term, I've got two minus signs, so it becomes a plus. If I pull out a minus I sub L of zero minus, then I have an extra minus sign here, and I get S squared and L in the denominator, and then I'm left with this times this term, which has got two minus signs, so it's gonna be plus V sub C of zero minus times C divided by SL. Denominator, G times SC, and I have G times one over SL, and then I have one over SL times, times C, so the S is canceled, I get C over L, and then I get one over S squared, L squared. And here I get three minus signs, so I just have a minus, one over S squared, L squared. I have this term cancel with this one. This term cancels with this one. And let's multiply numerator and denominator by SL, get a polynomial this way. First term then becomes S squared LC, and just one times I of S, and then I sub L of zero minus times SL times C, and then I have this term over here, which is V sub C of zero minus times C times SL divided by SL. I have this term here, multiplying this times SL, I get S squared L times C times G. And then I get this term here, which is gonna be G. I get this term here, which is C over L times SL. The L's cancel and I just get SC. Now we could group these terms together in terms of things that multiply I sub S, same denominator. In our last video, we defined this as the zero state response. And here's the zero input response. Could have found it by superposition, or we just did it by using node equations.
A couple terms here. The zeros of the circuit determinant are called the natural poles because they depend on the circuit and give rise to the natural response terms in the partial fraction expansion. The poles of the input sources, in this case that would be those of I sub S, are called force poles because they depend on the form of the input signal and give rise to force response terms in the partial fraction expansion. Let's take this last example and evaluate it with a zero initial condition for the inductor and the capacitor and a 1K resistor, a 500 millihenry inductor, a 0.2 microfarad capacitor, and a 10 milliamp step for I sub S. With I sub L equal to zero, and now this term is equal to zero, and then we have the capacitor voltage also being equal to zero, so this whole term drops out. We're looking at the zero state response. I sub S is a step of 10 milliamps, so 10 milli over S. We have S squared times L is a half a millihenry. C is equal to 0.2 microfarads. Likewise here, 0.5 and then 0.2, and then we have a 1K resistor, so that's 1 millimo. And the capacitor is 0.2 microfarads and then 1 millimole again. Let's multiply this out. We get 100 nano. Multiplying this out, I get 100 pico, 0.2 micro and 1 milli. Let's pull out 100 nano from the numerator. And let's pull out 100 pico from the denominator. So you have S squared and then divided by 100 nano, which is 10 to the minus 7. So that becomes 10 to the 7th or 10 times 10 to the 6th. Pulling out 100 pico over here, I'm left with just S squared. And then S divided by 100 pico. So I got 0.2 micro, so 0.2 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 100 times 10 to the minus 12 is equal to 2,000. And then 10 to the minus 3 divided by 100 times 10 to the minus 12 is 10 times 10 to the 6. And this ratio over here, we got, well, I've got the milli over here also. So let's multiply the milli times the nano. That gives me 10 to the minus 12 divided by 10 to the minus 12. And that cancels and just have a 10 left over. So my V of S then is equal to this expression in the S domain. Let's next find the roots of the denominator. So let's use our quadratic formula, minus 2k plus or minus 2k squared minus 4 times 1 times this term, which is 10 to the 7th, divided by 2 times 1. The square root of this quantity turns out to be a j6000. And so then I've got a minus 1k plus or minus j3k. So these are my two roots then. So then v of s would have k1 over s and then k2 divided by the negative of this root s plus 1k minus j3k, and then the negative of this root, which would be 1k plus j3k. We showed in chapter 9 on page 20 that this is the complex conjugate of this. So we just have to solve for k2, and then we're just going to change the sign on the angle if we put it in polar form. Let's find k1. So we'll take our expression from the last page, multiply it by s, and let s equal 0. So we get these terms to cancel. So I've got 10, then times 10, times 10 to the 6th, divided by 0 plus 0, and the same value, 10 times 10 to the 6th. These cancel, and I just left with 10. For k2, I'm going to multiply by this, which is s plus 1k minus j3k, and then letting s equal minus 1k plus j3k. We get a term cancellation here with this one, and let's plug in our values. I'm going to have s squared, so I'm going to have this term squared, and then plus 10 to the 7th. Here's my value of s, which is just minus 1k plus j3k. And then plugging in the same value here, the 1k's cancel. And I just have j3k twice. Squaring this, I'm going to get the first term squared, which is going to be 10 to the 6th. Because the inner product times 2, so I'm going to have 3k times 1k with a minus sign. So I get a minus there. So I get 6 times k squared, which is 10 to the 6th. And then I've got a j. And then I lastly have j times 3k squared, so that's going to be a minus. 9 and then k squared or 10 to the 6th, and then plus 10 to the 7th. You can multiply this out, j6k times minus 1k, so I get a minus j6 times 10 to the 6th. And then for the second term, I get a j squared, so I get a minus 1. And then I've got 3k times 6k, which would be 18 times 10 to the 6th. Let's clean up some of the terms. So I've got the real part here, I've got 10 to the 6th. I've got plus 10 times 10 to the 6th, so that's going to be 11. And then I have minus 9 times 10 to the 6th, so that gives me 2. And then I have j6 times 10 to the 6, that's over there. And put the real part over here and the imaginary part over here. You can divide through by 10 to the 6, and multiply through by 10. So I have 20 minus j60 over 18 minus j6. So let's put this into polar form. It'll be a little bigger than 60. It'll be in the fourth quadrant, but closer to 90 degrees because this is longer than this. It'll be in the third quadrant with this, a little bit longer than 18. Angle turns out to be a minus 161.6. So this ratio is 3.33, and then the numerator minus the denominator is 90 degrees. So then our V sub A of S is our first residue, 10 over S, 3.33 at angle 90 over S plus 1K minus J3K, and then the conjugate of that is just a minus 90 instead of a plus 90.
chapter 9 on pages 20 and 21, we've found that the inverse Laplace transform of this combination is equal to twice the value of the magnitude of k, so that'd be 6.66 e raised to the minus alpha times t, so minus 1k times t, and then the cosine of 3k, and then the angle here at 90 degrees. I'm just going to multiply all of this by u of t. I'm going to write e to the minus alpha t as e to the minus t over tau. Take the reciprocal of 1k, and that's 1 milli. We pull out a 2 pi. We do things in lab. We're measuring things in hertz for the most part because we're measuring period in seconds. So let's pull out a 2 pi here and I'm left with 477.7 times t. But given that step input, my output then is a value of 10 and this will exponentially decay but it'll be the decaying cosine function. This is doing node voltage analysis in the S domain with some evaluations. 